Hey guys, it's Bub here. In this video, we're taking a look at the all new Tiny 10 2302 32-bit edition. The reason we're taking a look at this is because it is a brand new build. It came out yesterday, um, and it brings some of the great features of Tiny 11 into Tiny 10. As we know before, Tiny 10 was pretty much static. It couldn't receive updates. Windows Defender wasn't enabled. And overall, I mean, it, it was okay to use as an operating system day to day, but you had to go out and do those updates, and Windows Update didn't work and all that stuff. When Tiny 11 came out, it was easier. Windows Defender was enabled, it was secure, it was able to receive updates. I mean, it was a usable OS. So this build of Tiny 10 aims to bring that to Tiny 10, obviously, from Windows 11. So one thing that the developer NT Dev did mention is that Tiny 10 32-bit will be the only edition of Tiny 10 2302 because Tiny 11 is meant to be the 64-bit. So this is meant for 32-bit machines and then obviously... The other one is meant for 64-bit machines, Tiny 11. So one thing that I don't think I did was actually, you know, connect the... Oh, no, it's connected. And it is set to use the Tiny 230 whatever. And it is not booting. And I think I might know why. All right, let's try this. And there we go. So I think part of the reason was because it's a 32-bit operating system. Maybe I'm wrong. It wouldn't support UEFI boot. So I just switched the OS to Windows 7 for now, and it's booting in, you know, your classical BIOS instead of UEFI. So maybe that's why. Maybe I'm wrong, but just switching the mode, creating a new VM seemed to help. All right, let's go ahead and accept the terms. Click Next, Custom, and Install to the 60 gig partition. All right, and here we go. We are now booting into the Tiny10 2303 installer. Um, I think we're just going to expect, you know, our typical Windows 10 installer. Yep. Uh, just, I just want to say, I mean, it's not a Tiny 10 thing. It's more of a Windows 10 thing. But looking at this installer after dealing with Windows 11 so much more, I mean, it's it's just crazy. Now, one thing, obviously, network, no internet. I mean, that isn't really a big problem, but I'm a little curious as to why. Um, it could be because I set the VM to Windows 7. Um Let's see. Uh, we'll just, let's just do bridged. Let's just see what happens with that. We'll just connect it directly to the network. Uh, we'll just click next. I mean, we're, 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 we are able to diagnose the network later to see, you know, are we getting an IP address or whatever. I don't know why I just named this user account Winver. I was trying to type Windows and the brain took over for some reason. But anyways, we're going to accept all the terms, which I don't believe those were in previous versions of Tiny10. I think he cut those out, um, but they are back here. All right, and here we are. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to install VMware tools. Um, <clears throat> maybe that'll fix our network and or will give us, you know, our screen to be a little nicer. Um, I think that the Windows 7 VMware tools is the same as the Windows 10. So, yep, looks like we're going to be all good to install these. Um, as for the network connection, I'm a little curious. I mean, can it, it really just not reach the network? I mean... I, I think that might be it. Okay, it appears like installing that has actually fixed the network. I, I literally watched it get an IP address and IP config. Um, but okay, we're going to restart this and hopefully, keyword, hopefully, see our desktop. See, with a normal version of Tiny10, I wouldn't be so worried about getting the internet to work. But I just really want to show that, you know, the Windows Update feature and Windows Defender work. And, you know, obviously Windows Update requires internet connectivity which is why I was a little worried about it. So here we go. Uh, one thing, I know why it's not, I have to turn that off. No? Yes, there we go. We are now in full screen mode on Tiny10. So let's go ahead and open settings. Um, one thing I'm noticing is it's not very fast, um, but I think that's just because I have the specs on this VM very throttled. Like yeah, one gig of RAM, one core. Um, it's just my situation, but again, this is a 32-bit OS. It's probably designed to run on crappy computers like the one gig of RAM, but you also have to remember running in 1440p right now, so there's that. Biggest feature of this, obviously, Windows Update. If you remember previously, Tiny10 would just say, you know, there was an error, and then when we tried to repair it through the troubleshooter, it said there were corrupt or missing files. So let's just see if we're able to reach the update server and see what happens. But while we wait for that, let's take a look at the OS build info. Uh, it is 10 Enterprise LTS C21H2, um, you know, typical stuff that we see, um, pretty good. 
Uh, while we wait for Windows Update to do updates, let's take a look here of the pre-installed apps. I mean, this looks like your typical pre-installed stuff that we got with previous, you know, typical Windows accessories, administrative tools, ease of access, as well as PowerShell and Windows System. So very bare bones. I, I like it. And as we can see, Windows Update is successfully working. It was able to install all the updates already, so that was pretty quick. Um, as well as Windows Defender. I want to see if that's on here, if the search will work. Yep, Windows Security does appear to be on the machine, and we can open it, and we should be able to see that everything is good. I mean, of course, besides the fact that they want us to sign in with a Microsoft account. I mean, we're, we're not going to do that because we're not dumb. Um, yep, virus and threat protection, everything is up and running. I mean, we should be able to just run a quick scan, and everything should be all good to go. I mean, that's pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, previous versions of Tiny10 did not do this, which makes me really happy to see that they brought security to this. Um, and as we've seen with previous versions of Tiny10 and my Is Tiny10 and Tiny11 Clean videos, um, Tiny10 is clean. I mean, there's no viruses, there's no nothing. And the fact that you're able to get updates on it makes it even more technically clean because you're able to update your system, get patches uh, from Microsoft and all that fun stuff. So I would say that this is actually a very valid contender for old oper for older computers. I mean, obviously, I mean, we're, we're, we're freezing on this stuff. I mean, I have one gig of RAM, and it's not the most optimized. You know what I mean? It's, not, it's one gig of RAM, one core, not optimized. But again, this is what it's meant to be. But I don't think that it was meant to be ran on a one gig, one gig of RAM, one core, 10th gen i7, if that makes any sense. So hopefully that this is just because of the virtualization and whatever. Um, it's lagging like this because I have not had issues with this on any version of Tiny10 before. But that being said, that was just a basic overview of Tiny10 2303, just to kind of see how it is, what's going on with it. Um, if you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you're new around here as we do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.